hello what's up everybody turn down the music a little bit there we go what's up everybody how's everyone doing just gonna start the stream off slow while people get in here and stuff like that but yeah as the title says today is gonna be animation boot camp i'm gonna be your instructor my name is owner and uh, i'm a student here at the school we're gonna be using blender today that's mainly what i do here at the school as well so buckle up and before i really start getting into anything there's a um, little download link for everybody i pinned it as a comment and it should also be in the description of the stream so uh, go down there and then download it and you can follow along with me today and hopefully it should be really fun and enjoyable and educational for everybody yeah feel free to say hello or something if you're in the chat and you're breathing and alive because this is a live stream i'd really love for people to interact and that would make everything a lot more enjoyable and fun and hopefully people can learn something as well from asking questions and interacting any and all questions are pretty much allowed uh, well if it's related to animation or 3d or the school or something like that feel free to ask whatever is on your mind and in your heart I'll do my best to answer any kind of questions that you do have I'll show the scene look a little bit strange let me try to fix that there we go okay okay should look nice all right so um once you're ready to follow along just download the link open up the scene it should be very easy uh, you should pretty much be able to follow along with any blender version but i'm using 4.0 here so download it, just double click the file that you have. You don't need any type of previous experience. I'll go through everything that you see on the screen. So no need to worry about stuff. If it looks complicated, don't worry, it's really not. I'll hold your hand through everything. And if you're ever lost or your stuff goes too fast, just feel free to, you know, tell me in the chat, hey, this was too fast. Could you go over that again? Or I have a question about this or that. That's completely fine too. And if you have a question about something else you've done in 3D before, maybe, that's completely fine too. Uh, hello to the people that are new in the chat. If, uh, I mean, if you guys want to tell me, I'd love to know if any of you have previous 3D experience. Maybe you've joined any of the other boot camps or something like that. Or if you have none, let me know as well. And I can kind of get to know all of you a little bit at least. I hope people have been able to get the scene open and ready to go. There's a little hearts in the chat. Hearts back to y'all too. Don't be scared of using the chat guys, it is completely fine. I'm not gonna bite you, I promise. Okay, well, I'll just get right into it because it might be a little daunting at first, but I will go over everything that you see on the screen right now. So, Blender is basically a very versatile 3D software it's like the sort of like the swiss army knife of 3d so it can do mostly anything that you would want to do in 3d but today we're just going to be doing animation so even though it looks like there's tons of stuff on the screen uh no need to worry because we will use like only five percent of it or something or ten percent whatever so the main window that we see here is what we call the viewport and i'll be referencing that a lot so the viewport is basically our view into our 3D scene. And that's just where we see all the things that we've made and are interacting with. And up here we see all our workspaces. So this is, like I said, the Swiss army knife of 3D. There's, there's modeling, sculpting, UVs, texture painting, a bunch of stuff. And if you don't know what any of that stuff is, no need to worry. We're just going to be animating today. So we're going to be using the animation tab mostly. What these workspaces are, 
it's just different layouts of this first little window that we have here you can just move stuff around and change the little boxes to whatever you want and then this one is set up to be efficient for animation and we'll get into that as well in a little bit all right and then on the right here we have what we call the outliner and if you've used any other 3D software, you might be familiar with it. It is just where we have a list of all the stuff that we see in our viewport, more or less. So if you're ever not able to find something, well, you'll be able to find it out in your outliner and you can also search for stuff. But we will not be doing that for this level bootcamp. And here we have like some of the more advanced functions of Blender. And at the bottom we have our timeline and this is where we will be animating stuff. And before I get more into the whole animation part of this bootcamp, I just want to talk about what it is that we're actually going to be animating today. So this is like a day one out of a two day sort of session. So session one out of two. And today we're going to be animating a very, very basic bouncing ball. And the reason we're doing that, and the reason why you might have heard about the bouncing ball before, if you looked into any type of animation, education, or any type of like tutorials, is because the bouncing ball is super great to um, teach like the very basic principles of animation. It's a very simple object to sort of imagine, and it's something that we're all familiar with. And it's something that can really be played around with a lot, even if your drawing skills or animation skills are very like in basic and you're new to all of this stuff, right? You can really show a lot about what like animation is all about just through a simple bouncing ball. And so that's what we're going to be doing today. So let me show an example from like one of the other uh, boot camps I've held. So this is kind of where we ended up with and if I could get everybody to end up with this kind of result as well I'd be very very happy because this is the type of thing where there's a lot more to it than what it looks like and once you get all of it right it'll be very satisfying in the end. So it'd be great if I could get people to this point where they can export a little animation for themselves. So a lot of the stuff I'll go over today is animation basics and that can be used for stuff that's not even related to 3d in reality it can be used for motion graphics it can be used for traditional animation like with pen and paper and so on and so forth it's really just like basic basic animation and then combined with a basic like overview of how to actually use blender as well right so once we want to start working with our little ball here, we need to know how to move the camera around. So to do that, you might be seeing me doing it already because it's like second nature at this point. But all you do is you hold the middle button on your mouse. So you have the little scroll wheel on your mouse and basically you just click that scroll wheel. And then you can like orbit around in this viewport here. This might be really basic to some of the people watching, especially if you've used Blender before. Um, and that's okay, just bear with me for a moment while I get everybody caught up. And then from there you should be able to learn something because I'll really get into the principles of how you do good looking animation. And that should be educational for anyone, no matter how much 3D experience they have in Blender, if they're new to animation. So yeah, middle mouse to orbit around the ball and then if you want to pan the camera around, you add a shift to that. So you click shift on your keyboard and then you hold the middle button on your mouse and you can pan around. And then in combination with these two, the middle mouse button and the shift middle mouse combination, you can sort of move around your scene, which is what we want to do. And then if you want to zoom in and out, it's very easy. You just scroll on your scroll wheel. So you scroll on the middle mouse button. And then just these three buttons alone is enough to get us where we want to go. So shift, middle mouse, middle mouse to orbit around and just scroll in and out. 
if you have this scene open, if you're following along live or on the VOD on the YouTube channel, just play around with these for a little bit. Just get used to like not getting super lost already. If something, if you break something now, it's completely fine. Just close it, don't save, and then just reopen the Blender file, and you'll be right back, like right back where we started without any issues. Right. So get used to that idea. We will be using um, the orthographic view a lot, which is basically like a side view of the ball, because we're going to be doing a very, very basic like up and down motion. So it's kind of easy for us to work in this view because we can just see the ball from the side and it'll make it easy to kind of see what, what we're actually doing. And so to go into that orthographic view, you don't use any of these key combinations I just taught you, but you can click up here. There's this little gizmo thing. And if you click and drag it, you can rotate around sort of like with middle mouse button. But if you click the little axis icons, you can click this minus Y to go into the front orthographic view, which is basically just like a front side view and that'll make it really easy for us to work in. Other than that, um, what you need to know is you can click G, G for grabbing basically. So if I wanna move this ball, I can click G and then I can move it around. Obviously we wanna use that because we're gonna make it bounce. So we want it to move around the screen. So G, G and you can like move it around wherever you want. If you're um, from other 3D softwares or if you're not a big fan of hotkeys, that's completely fine too. Um, what we have out here on the left side in, the, in Blender is like our little toolbox. And here, there's like our basic selection cursor. You just left click to select stuff. And then we have our little gizmos here. So you can left click on something and then you'll get these arrows on it. And what they're basically doing for you is that you can left click and drag on them to move the ball in whatever direction you want. Left click and drag. Let's say if we only want to move it on two axes, so in this case we want to move it on the Z and X axes, you can click this little green thing here in between them and you can move them on these two axes. So it moves it in like a flat plane. So you can do either. Uh, I prefer to use hotkeys a lot because that's faster for me, but you might be used to uh, Maya or another 3D package and those are also great. And I think a lot of people would prefer to use the gizmo uh, in those cases, if that's where you're from. Um, or if you're just not a big fan of hotkeys, you can also do that too. Also out here, by the way, we do have stuff like rotation and they work in the same ways too. You just grab these little handles and you can rotate stuff. You can scale stuff up and down. Yeah, that's great. And if you want to do that with hotkeys, it's just S to scale, real simple, and R to rotate. So um, once we start getting into stuff, you see me actually doing it already a lot. Uh, I keep on doing what I've done. And this is like one of the most useful <laughs> hotkeys in any type of like art, uh, PC, fuck like pc world space is like undoing stuff so Control z is almost like a universal hotkey it's in almost every software that you'll ever use in this space Control z and you can basically undo you go one step back from what you've done before Control z yeah and then if you want to you can Control shift z to redo but usually you just use undo so you do something and you don't really like the way it looks you just Control z and you go back to where you were. So don't be scared of moving stuff. Great. And then in Blender, there's a really handy thing. If you want to get a little bit more advanced with the hotkeys, if you're a little brave, you can click G to move. And then if you click Z, it will m lock your like movement to only the Z axis. And this will be very useful. G, Z, okay. Now this scene is set up real easy, so you shouldn't get into too many problems about moving stuff on the wrong axes. I've kind of made it so I put like basically little, um, what's it called? You know, little support wheels on the side of your bike so you don't fall and hurt yourself. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then lastly, before we get into it a little bit, 
we have the timeline and I'll get out of here for that because I'm kind of in the way. So, oh yeah, and if you're just joining into the stream or if, you, or if you're joined in the last whatever 10 minutes or something, I'm just going over the basics of how to use Blender. You can still follow along, it's not too late. Just download the scene. It's uh, the uh, Wii transfer link that's pinned as a comment and also in the comment section of the live stream. I just scroll down below. Okay. I'll get out of here for a second. This is a level stage. Okay. So we have the timeline down here. I'm just dragging on this little window to make it bigger or smaller. And this is where we actually animate stuff. We have our little timeline down here. And if you see the green number, that is basically the, the frame that we're currently at. So right now nothing changes as we're dragging the timeline because we haven't set any keyframes. And I'll get more into what keyframes are and all these things a little bit when we get into it. But all you have to know for now is that this is basically the time inside Blender. So out here on the right, we can set a start and an end frame. So we set it to 100 frames. You see this little area got darker. You can drag on the little dot here on the slider to make it fill out the whole screen. And so now we have an animation from one to frame 100, but nothing is happening. That's because we have to set keyframes. And to do that, you click I, and then you can set like a location keyframe. And so if we say, let's say at frame 100, you want the ball to be over here. So we click I and then set a location keyframe. So now we have a keyframe at frame 50 and frame zero. And so you can click, let me get back in here for a second. You can click up and down on your keyboard. Oops. There we go. You can click up and down on your keyboard to sort of cycle through these keyframes. So we have a keyframe on frame zero and frame 50. Boop, boop, boop. And then we can set one wherever we want on frame 100. I to do that, set the location and we can cycle through them. And then if we click the space bar, it will actually play our animation. So now we have a cute little animation of the ball doing some random stuff. Right, and that's basically how we animate in Blender. Uh, and of course, there's a lot more to it because this doesn't really look like anything right now. Um, and that's what this bootcamp is all about. I'll sort of go into how you actually make something look remotely like what you want it to look like. Boop, boop, boop. So I hope... Um, people are able to follow along so far if there's questions about the stuff I've just gone through feel free to ask if you have questions about the school or about grade in general feel free to ask I'm always open for that kind of stuff right. um, and one last little thing I want to go over before we really get into the meat of this boot camp is you might see out here on the right is where we have our little uh, transforms box and here it basically just if you imagine our 3d space is like a coordinate system that you might know from high school or middle school or whatever we have the x is the red y is the green and then z is the up and down axis and if we move something on the x-axis the x location gets larger we move it on the y y gets larger and z z gets larger obviously and what can we use this for? Well, it's kind of easy to put in uh, numbers out here instead of moving stuff sometimes. So say we want the ball is like here and we want it to touch the ground. Well, we can just go to the Z location and type in zero and then bam, it's touching the ground. Or if we wanted it to move, it's like exactly up to three meters on the Y or like three meters up in the air. We can do that. We can just type that. So this will be very useful later too. And it's also the same with the rotations. Let's say we wanted to spin exactly 306 degrees. We can do that, right? Or like 180 or something like that. Okay, so if people have been following along so far and you've kind of been messing, messing up your scene a little bit, I just recommend like closing it and not saving. So just exit out, 
don't save and then reopen it. And then we'll get into the uh, actual animation of the bouncing ball a little bit from there. So, boop. You reopen it. Um, takes a second and then there it is this should be a completely fresh scene and i will actually get into how we do the animation of the bouncing ball so a little refresher for the people watching this is kind of what it is that our end goal should be it's a bouncing ball but we're giving it a little bit of life because that's what we can do with animation we can give stuff life and it's kind of, I kind of made it look like it's almost jumping up in the air, right? We kind of, we want to achieve that. Okay. So, basically the meat of it, how do we actually start animating in Blender? So what you saw me do before is just, I would grab the ball and move it around with G. But actually to animate in Blender, usually we use something called a rig. And a rig in very basic terms is basically like a skeleton, like the skeleton of a thing. So imagine the rig of your body is like literally your skeleton. So if I wanted to move my arm, well how would I how would I sort of describe that in 3D space? Well I would say move this bone this much like move it 45 degrees and it moves that much right, let me get the right angle move the bone 45 degree and then my arm goes like that so we have the same thing for stuff that aren't like basically humans we have it for everything we call the skeleton or a rig so the ball has a rig and right now it consists of this main controller down here this top controller and the bottom controller and how we actually end up controlling this rig is we gotta pose it so first things first we select our rig we go up in the top left where it says object mode so now we're basically selecting objects we go up here and we go into pose mode so basically what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start posing the ball sort of like you would pose a human and now we can access these different controllers by left clicking. If we open our transform box out here, the little arrow here, you just click it and it opens up. You can see there's a bunch of logs here. And these are like the safety wheels I talked about earlier. I locked a lot of stuff so you won't get lost in what we're doing because this is very uh, beginner friendly. So if you click G, you'll be able to move points of this rig up and down. So the main controller will move the whole ball, the top controller will move the top of it, and the bottom controller will obviously move the bottom of it. Right. And that is what we'll use to start animating our ball. So if we get right into it, if you remember from before, I'll just start out by going into the orthographic view. You can click Y here, or you can click one on your numpad. What's up, Walpawim? How are you doing? Click one on my numpad here. I go here, front view. I have the main controller selected. I and now I can move my ball up and down. So like before, I click I to set a keyframe. So I'll set one at the bottom. And then obviously a bouncing ball is gonna be going up to so let's see after 20 frames we're just going to be guessing right now after 20 frames we move it up in the air we click i set another location keyframe and then after another 20 frames let's say we go to our transforms here and we basically put it down into the ground like at zero then we hit i to set a location keyframe and then we lock it in and now if we play it back up and down on your arrow keys to scroll. If we play it here, we have a little bouncing ball animation. But we also have a bunch of space in our timeline that's not really used for anything. 
So we can say right now we have from frame 1 to 40. So we can just set the end of our animation to frame 40. And the way I'm doing that, I am blocking this little thing. But you go over here, you have your start and end frame. And we can put the end frame to frame 40. Here we go, we can play it. And then once it hits the end, it's gonna like reset back. So now we have a looping animation. And this looks nothing like what it is that we want. It doesn't really look like a great bouncing ball. It doesn't have the same energy. It doesn't feel the same. And this is like what animation is all about. It's sort of understanding all these, like why is it that stuff feels a certain way? How do we actually get it to look the way we want it to look? If we play this back, you see it's actually sort of strange. And to understand why that is, animators refer to something that's called the 12 principles of animation. And so this is something that's like really, so I'm a visual person and I really like to see stuff in front of me. And that's why I will show you guys a video. It's a really great video from our 3D Essentials course, uh, 3D Animation Essentials course. And it will sort of explain to you why this looks odd and how to fix it. So if there's anything I would like for people to get out of this course or this little bootcamp is actually to understand these animation principles in like a very basic sense because there's really a lot of depth to them and people spend like their whole career really mastering them. But if you get like the basic understanding down, then you'll really be able to use it for any type of animation that you do in the future, whether it's pen on paper or uh, whether it's literally like yeah, 3D or other type of tr traditional animation. So again, this video is from our 3D Animation Essentials course um, at Keda, and you can access it on the website. You can go there and learn more about what it is and what's it, it, what it's about. Um, so I'm gonna get out of here for a little bit. I'm just gonna play this video for you all. It's a six minute video and it's like really, it's really nice and I hope you will learn something from this. And then I'll go back to me uh, and us kind of working our ball from there. So here we go, I'll get out of here. Before diving into Blender, it's important that we understand some terminology and concepts that are fundamental to animation. Animation is an art form that is over a century old. At its most basic, it is a sequence of still images that have been manipulated to create the illusion of life and to elicit ideas and emotions on an audience. There's many different ways to create animation. Pencil on paper, oil paint on glass, clay puppets, 3D images. The possibilities are endless. Animation can encompass any and all visual styles. And while there's no rules to animation, usually we're trying to establish a relationship between us and the audience. And in order to do so, we need to create animation that can feel relatable. The process of animation can depend a lot on the technique that we use. In our case, we will be doing 3D computer animation. The workflow has been greatly influenced by classical hand-drawn 2D animation and stop motion. Wherein, starting from an idea or an emotion, whether it is for a small scene or an entire movie, a series of images are created to communicate that concept. We usually identify key moments in time, and from there we continue to create images to fill all that time and space in between. To help create those key images and to create the illusion of life in the screen, animators have traditionally used 12 principles to great effect to create appealing and believable animation. So let's take a look. Squash and stretch. This is perhaps the easiest principle to distinguish. All objects and matter have a degree of weight, volume, and flexibility. Rigid objects tend to deform little, while objects that are softer and with more plasticity tend to deform more. Through squash and stretch, we can illustrate actions, reactions, perspective, and forces applied to a particular object. Anticipation 
Anticipation prepares the audience for an action that is about to be performed. Each major action is preceded by a movement that is usually to the opposite direction of what is about to happen. Staging. Staging is the presentation of an idea so that it is clear. Staging uses elements like the posing of a character, the composition of a shot, and other abstract elements to communicate a concept or emotion to the audience, always with clarity in mind. Straight ahead and post to pose. This principle mostly refers to hand-drawn animation and a specific way of working in order to create it. Straight ahead animation means that one works by drawing or posing the animation from start to finish, frame by frame while pose to pose functions by establishing certain keyframes that function as landmarks or targets, leaving space in the middle for in-betweens to be done at a later time. Follow through and overlapping action. Not all things move at the same time. Some initiate movement while others drag behind. And in characters, not all things stop at the same time either. So when the main body stops, all other parts continue to move until they lose all momentum and catch up to the main mass. Things like animal tails, clothes, hair, or limbs can help create more believability by delaying or offsetting their movement from the main mass of the character, and consequently how they settle into a still position. Slow in and slow out. Following the laws of physics, characters and objects need time to accelerate and to slow down. So more pictures are drawn near the beginning and the end of an action or a change of direction. Fewer drawings in between makes the action faster, while more drawings make the action slower. Arcs. In characters and creatures, rarely do we move in a straight line. Usually our bodies move in arcs or slightly circular trajectories, giving a more organic and natural feeling. Straight movement is usually reserved for actions that need to come across as mechanical and stiff. Secondary action. It's an additional action in the scene that complements and reinforces the main action and acting choices of the scene. Timing. This principle refers to the number of frames for a given action, which translates to the speed of the action. Correct timing makes objects appear to obey the laws of physics. Timing can help us understand the weight and impetus of an object or character, as well as the level of reality depicted through the animation. Pushed or stylized timing can alter the reality of a character and their personality. Exaggeration Perfect imitations of realistic movements can often seem static or dull. Exaggerating or pushing an action can help emphasize it and create clarity and a stronger emotional reaction in our audience. Depending on our style of animation, the degree of exaggeration can help establish the narrative and the tone of our story. Solid drawings. While also most applicable for 2D animations, solid drawings can be understood for 3D animation as creating good balanced poses for our characters that have clear lines of action, sense of volume, and a sense of consistency for the character. Appeal. It refers to creating a sense of charm and pleasing the viewer's eyes through action. Not that everything needs to be cute, but it does need to be satisfying. An important thing to mention is that you don't have to use the extreme form of these principles all the time. Think of them like ingredients to cook a delicious meal. Sometimes we will be using some more than others. Very cartoony animation might use a lot of stretch and squash and a lot of exaggeration, while maybe realistic animation will opt to do something much more subtle with very little contrast. It really depends on what it is that we're animating that we will use those principles for. If you want to learn more about these principles, and I really encourage you to, I recommend two books to continue your research. The first one is The Illusion of Life by Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston, and the second one is The Animator's Survival Kit by Richard Williams. A lot of these principles will become much, much clearer once we start animating. It's a good idea to revisit them and research more about them once in a while. In the next video, I will be making a brief introduction to Blender. We'll take a look around and we will be making our very first animation. See you then. back again i hope you guys learned something from that but if it was a little bit fast and a little bit confusing that's okay too we'll go error over everything as we apply it to our little bouncing ball and um, just to remind everybody this is from the 3d animation essentials course on kata's website and um, if you like what we're doing today i would recommend uh, checking that out for like more in-depth stuff 
this is just the beginning of the course and then it goes through like more and more complex stuff um yeah you can learn more about that on kda's website okay so where are we at well we're at this stage here and we don't know anything or we haven't applied any of the animation principles so where do we start well in order we start with the timing so uh, for a reminder the timing is basically like the time between between our key poses so how long does it take before the ball goes from the bottom to the top and how long does it take for the ball to go from the top to the bottom so even though right now our animation looks very strange we can sort of imagine if it didn't look strange if that makes sense so if we play it you can imagine okay is that the right timing could a ball spend that much time in the air and i'm gonna say for now sure sure it could so let's just go with that for now our timing is gonna be this so 20 frames from the bottom post to the up post and another 20 frames from the up post to the down post and next up is one of the most like um one of the things that changes the most about our animation and that's the spacing so the spacing is basically like the time or the distance between like each frame and that might sound a little bit confusing but it's more obvious if we look at how spacing is described in like in a traditional sense so our timing is like shown it's the time between our like main poses here and then the spacing is the uh, distance between each frame so you can imagine if you move something a lot on one frame it's gonna move faster than something that moves a little bit in one frame so if you move it a lot every frame it's gonna appear as if that's moving very fast across the screen but if you move it a little bit on every frame it's gonna appear as if it's moving like very slowly and this is the same in traditional and in uh, 3d animation or in computer animation so in traditional you would draw your main poses here with the timing right or you can work on the timing as well later in traditional but then you go over and you draw every single frame and where you want the ball to move slower you basically draw more balls and where you want it to move faster you draw less balls and then you like show all these pictures in a succession and that's where you have like your frame rate and then you play it and then it's going to be slower where there's a lot of balls and faster where there's not a lot of balls and that's basically what blender is doing for us and that's what's so kind of nice about computer animation is that we don't have to draw every single frame of our animation as you can imagine that would take quite a while like just here we have 40 frames so we'd have to go over all 40 of them to like get a nice animation and we don't want to do that we don't have to do that in computer animation which is amazing so Blender, so you can imagine we have all Blender, all we told Blender is we want the ball to be down here, up here, and then down here. And so it basically has to guess what is in between. This is what we call in betweening, is like when we make the spacing too. So it guesses where the ball is gonna be in between. And it's basically guessing wrong. That's why it looks so odd. It kind of looks like it's levitating off the ground real slowly. It's kind of weird, that's not what we want. And to sort of understand how Blender is guessing, I have a little demonstration scene for you all, because I'm very visual and this can be a little bit confusing at times. So I made this little scene to demonstrate for the people. And this can look a little bit daunting at first, but do not worry, it is not that scary, I promise you all. So here we have, it looks scary, but it's actually just what we did. It's the exact same thing. We have a down 
on the first frame, up on the last frame, and down on the last frame too. And I didn't touch anything, this is exactly what we have in the other scene too. So you can see the ball moves in the same way. So what's actually happening here? What is it that Blender is guessing to put in between our key poses here? So I made this little graph on the right so you can actually see how much is it the ball moves for every frame we go forward. So in the beginning, the first frame here, so you can see we're at frame two, it doesn't move up a lot at all. And then the next frame is the same. It doesn't move up a lot at all again, but a little bit more. And then it keeps doing that. And then it's actually in the middle where it moves up the most for every frame that we go forward. So what does that mean? Well, that must mean that it's slow in the beginning, fast in the middle, and then up here, it's actually slowing down again because it doesn't move up a lot for each frame. So you can kind of see that on the left and the right here. And then the same happens when it goes down again. And this is basically what we call a Bezier interpolation in computer like animation. You don't have to worry about the naming, that's just what it's called. And so it's guessing in this way, and it's basically guessing wrong. We do not want that. What we do want is this kind of pattern. So we want it to be very fast in the beginning. So every time we move forward, we want it to go up a lot. And I kind of set it up over here for you all. So you can see what that sort of looks like. So if we look at this without looking at the ball, we can already see like once we go one up, the ball actually moves up a lot. And then it moves up a lot again. So it's moving up the most in the beginning. And then as we go towards the apex, the highest point of the jump, it starts to go up less and less. So from what we just learned, the expected thing is that it's very fast in the beginning, slow at the top, and then very fast again in the end. So if we play this back, that's exactly what we see. And it already looks a lot more like a, a ball that's sort of bouncing or jumping, which is great. This is exactly what we want. Like we want to get this feeling. But how do we actually achieve that? How we achieve that is by messing with the graph editor and the graph editor can be a little bit scary at first but once you start animating a lot it'll become your best friend because it's going to save you so much time when it comes to in betweening and stuff like that and you'll get familiar with it so basically at this point we can go back into our main scene here all i wanted you guys to understand is like what the difference between this sort of movement is and that sort of movement. So I'll close this down. And if we go back to into our main scene, now we can get into like the more heavy duty animation. Even though this is just for beginners, this is heavy duty in beginner terms. But don't worry, I'll hold your hand for everything. So what I did here is I went into the animation workspace. It's time to get our hands dirty, get some real work done. So right here, if you're still on the layout tab, you go into the animation workspace. Click the minus Y here to go into orthographic view. And then on the right here, we have to access the graph editor. So how do we do that? We click the little icon here. And then the top left of the little window, and we can change this window to basically anything that we want. But right now we want to use the graph editor. So if you remember from the previous scene, what we see is actually the exact same pattern that we saw in the um, uh, scene for demonstration. So for every, so basically what I have shown here, you can expand the root. The root is what we have selected and we can hide the Y and X location because we were just going up and down right now. And so we have the exact same pattern that we saw before. So the blue line is basically how high up our ball is. So from the first frame, the blue line is at zero. So it's zero in height. And we can see it here too, it's zero in height. The second frame, 
the blue line barely goes up so the ball also barely leaves the ground which means that the two that means like the two in-betweens are basically almost on top of each other you see the ball is barely moving which means it's very slow it's moving very slowly up in the air and the same keeps happening it moves not very far up in the air until it hits the middle where it starts moving the most for each frame and that means it's gonna go a lot faster you go to the apex and it starts slowing down at the apex too you go and then you see the same pattern on the other side so how do we actually fix that well we have here the main poses that we set before and we can actually play around with these in the graph editor so we can select this little handle by left clicking and dragging and then clicking g for grab and then we can move the handle around so i'm just going to do that right now left click drag g to move the handle around and then you see we kind of already get something that's more in line with what we wanted and what we saw in the demonstration too so in the beginning it actually moves up quite a lot and then as it hits the apex the top it's not moving up a lot for each frame so it's fast in the beginning and slow in the middle fast at the end fast as it's like accelerating towards the ground obviously so if we play it boom we get something that looks more correct it doesn't look great right now and that might be because we have to work on our spacing a little bit our timing sorry it's kind of it looks a little bit too slow and this is a feeling thing and you'll be able to feel it more the more you animate you'll sort of be able to feel your timings so what i did here i'll get out of here again and just sit up straight remember to drink water everybody and watch your back sit up straight if there's any questions about the stuff i'm doing also feel free to uh, ask away okay so i was supposed to get out of here so you all can actually see something okay um oops. so down here our frame count was at 40 I just set it to 30 because I feel like the whole animation needs to be a little bit faster. I'm left clicking and dragging here to select our, uh, um, our keyframes here, left clicking and dragging. I'm just moving that to 30. So that's basically our down pose. I want it to be at the 30 frame mark instead of the 41. And then I pick the top pose to be in the middle so at like 15 or something and then i play it back that looks more like a jump we can adjust it a little bit and here comes the playing part of animation you can adjust stuff however you want you can get different types of feelings you can stylize it at this point too if you want to and this already looks a lot more bouncy something i like to do is i select this top one here and you can actually s to scale it and that's just gonna make it like hold in the air a little bit longer and that kind of gives it a very mm, a very bouncy feeling because it's sort of staying in the air longer that's kind of what we perceive with something that's very bouncy there we go so at this point we can say that our spacing is fine it looks like the sort of movement that we want it doesn't look great yet and for reference i'll pull up what we're supposed to have so you can see the main part of the movement is there, but there's a lot of like, there's a lot of like detail, you could call the detail in the animation that's missing. A lot of power too. How do we go from here then? Well, we move on to, we move on to the anticipation and then squash and stretch. So what we're seeing here, it looks sort of odd because basically, at the first frame it just magically boop, just goes up in the air and because we are real people living in a real world even though we're doing a stylized animation nothing just boop, goes up in the air maybe except like a bullet firing out a like a rifle or something would just boop, like poof but any type of jump or something always has what we call an anticipation so a movement that happens before the movement 
you can think of it like a punch before you punch you pull back a little bit and then boom you go forward so you don't just go like that you go like that go back a little bit and then and even more so when you jump it's very obvious a person that's about to jump that you don't just jump from standing up they squat down first they squat down first and then poof, jump and even though we're not animating a person we still want to get the same feeling so we can animate a squat basically with our ball and how we do that is by using squash and stretch you can also think of it as like a spring so a spring will like compress before it springs up in the air so for our anticipation we need a little bit of time before the ball actually moves up in the air because we want it to squat down so at this point we should actually make our animation a little bit longer again so to do that you go here start an end frame i'll set it to like 35 because i think three five frames will be enough uh, anticipation i left click and drag everything and i move it forward so now there's a little bit of time before it actually goes up in the air which is exactly what we want so we have our keyframes here and we don't want to lose them we want to know where they are so you can click the little pin button here on the left side we have all our controllers and stuff that's or the stuff we have selected right now we can pin the root right now which is this controller right here and then once we go out of it it's still showing here so we can see where our keyframes are actually at now we can select our other controllers and we can start squashing it or making the ball squat like a spring we can compress it so in the beginning we want it to just be like up so now we're setting our keyframes basically for the squash and stretch so we set the location and then we can click up up arrow up arrow to go to the next uh, keyframe we can also click this little button down here and then we squash it so g we click g to squash it set the location if you ever get lost when you have to select the controllers and stuff like that like oh shit, i don't know where i am you can click the view up here and then say frame all and then you'll be back to the ball view frame all you can also click home on your keyboard okay click minus y up here to go back into orthographic view so now we have a squat it squats down and burp. but that looks super odd because obviously when people squat down or when a spring compresses as it goes up in the air as it releases all the energy it decompresses it, it decompresses like it elongates just like a jump you stretch your lengths as you jump up in the air and we want to show that too with the ball what does that mean well right here boom on the next frame we want to release all the energy so this is the squash and stretch part of it so the anticipation is everything that happens before the movement starts to make the reader like able to read the movement is what we call it so they can actually expect the movement to happen and it'll be a lot easier to sort of understand what's going on boom so you can see all that energy is being released right here and we're doing that with a large contrast so from a very squashed position to a very stretched position that gives us a very strong contrast which gives us the feeling of like power basically contrasts are super useful to get whatever feeling you want across when it comes to animation or even any type of art in general you can have a super crazy squash and then you could stretch it out really far to have insane energy in it or you could do the complete opposite too with contrast if you wanted to make something comedic you would squash it down really far and then as it leaves the air it just doesn't stretch at all it just becomes like a ball and then it would like not jump that much that would be kind of funny too like imagine a person trying to jump really high they go super far down in the air and they basically barely leave the ground but right now we just want to do like a basic bouncing ball so at the top we wanted to not squash because as it reaches the apex obviously gravity starts to affect it and it's going to go slower and slower 
so it's also going to stretch less and less because it doesn't have that energy it doesn't have that speed so i put it to zero up here in our transforms tab i to set the location and now we have this if anything is going too fast let me know everybody and i can sort of go over stuff a little bit slower too boom as we hit the apex you can see the first part of our animation is looking fine right now but then the last part is super odd because it just hits the ground like if you imagine a spring or a person as they hit the ground they sort of brace but they also take some of that energy in like they, they compress a little bit like a spring it hits the ground and it flattens out and compresses and we want to get that in there that's what we call squash so how do we do that well, as we hit the ground, we want it to flatten out. But before that, we also think about, well, when it's speeding towards it, it should also stretch out because it's getting a lot of energy. It's like, it's going fast. We want to get that feeling of speed and energy in there. So we stretch it out too. So we go, And then we want to squash it so we need a little bit more time here so now we're actually back to the 40 that we started with so right here boom we want to make it basically splash into the ground it flattens so it goes from very stretch to very flat and let's see what that looks like it looks a little bit strange course i mean it's gonna look strange and so we correct it and i can see a little mistake i did here something that's really nice to do is actually well the ball it should be flat like after it hit the ground if that makes sense so our frame that we put right here i'm just scrolling on my mouse wheel to zoom in by the way this frame i actually want that to be on the ground so i can left click up here and move it so now as it hits the ground it still has the speed and then boom on the next frame i want to flatten out set the location and then as it's going towards the end we want it to be a looping animation so we set it to zero i set the location keyframe and now we should have a squash so you see that it hits the ground flattens up and then it goes back And this is pretty much like the basic bouncing ball and it looks really simple but there's so much to it that you can do there's so much refinement to be had as well here and even though it looks fine at this point we can add more stuff like we can add another thing that's called follow through that was also one of the uh, animation principles right and it's basically you gotta imagine everything has weight and energy right so if i move my hand and i stop it do you see how my wrist kind of like you see that it's kind of if i do it in slow motion it's going too far and then back and it has that energy and it's kind of like being transferred around same with a spring if it hits the ground it hits it but that energy has to go somewhere so it goes up and then it's stretched and then it goes back so it kind of goes like boing you can kind of imagine like a pudding or something like that as well it goes like boing and that's called follow through like that energy has to go somewhere so what we're doing here is instead of it just going like straight back up like that we can actually have it go a little bit too far so a little bit higher than what it was and then back down again And that's giving it a little bit more of like a lively springy feeling i can give us a little bit more time for this now maybe we can even push it more why not let's try it and see what that looks like animation is all about playing around with people like have fun with it and then in the end your animation is always gonna look fun as well which is kind of something that is enjoyable to look at like you can always tell if someone had fun while they're doing their animation or not. 
So at this point I'm just going over stuff and like pushing it where I feel like it could be pushed. Always clicking I to insert the keyframe. Maybe I feel like I overdid it a little bit here. It's always easier to overdo it and then pull it back than not overdoing it at all. There we go. And from this point onwards we just refine. And if people have questions about it or want me to go over something, have questions about the school, feel free to ask everybody. I would love for this last little bit to be interactive, you know, that's what I'm here for. It's live, so we can do stuff while I'm here. That's the whole point of it all. Now, a little thing I like to do that I find is fun if I have a little bit of extra time is like, if you imagine a person jumping, some people when they jump real high as you go up in the air some people might tuck their legs in a little bit obviously our ball doesn't have legs at all but it has a little bottom controller here so we can sort of tuck in the little ball legs so <laughs> at the very top we want to tuck them in a little bit don't overdo this part because that can look really strange but it can also look kind of good so i'll just go back a little bit and then I'll set it to zero. So what do we have here? Basically, you see at the top, it's just tucking in a little bit. Go forward as well. And then extend the little ball legs out. And now when we play it, we see a little tuck at the top. Which I kind of find is really fun to see and look at. You kind of personalize the ball a little bit more by doing that. I find that really enjoyable. So at this point, if people can get to like this stage, that would be completely fantastic. Like it's so good for like a quick little one hour basically of boot camping, one and a half hours. And if you're here, um, we can export this and you have a little video to show of all the progress you've made and what you've learned. And how do we do that? I've set this scene up to be fairly easy to export from. So all you gotta do is you go into the left side here with the more advanced stuff. You go to the output tab, it's really simple. Just go to the output and all you have to do is go to output and then click the little folder here. And basically here you pick where a blender is gonna spew out the uh, video that we're taking. So I'm just gonna go into like pictures or uh, documents here and then animation video, the session, yeah you can make like a new folder we just do like uh, bouncing ball three and then we go in here accept it and now we can go into our view and then go to cameras and then set our view as the active camera oh oops there is no camera on this scene i think i might have used a little bit of an older version that's completely fine too uh, let me make sure everything is set right then okay it is fine okay then we just go where it is that you want to record from so let's say I want to record from right here this is fine so you can go and then there's a button up here called show overlays if you click this then you can see any of the um, bones and stuff that we use to control our things but at the same time it's gonna look better on the video and now you can go into view and then you can click viewport render animation Great. and that's gonna render a little animation for us so I'll just go and find that real quick we go and we've essentially made a little bouncing ball so we've succeeded with what we had to do today and that's basically it make a little bouncing ball oops i lost some lights oops but that's okay it's gonna be a little bit dark for 
that's it for the last part but i think i think your value will survive but yeah we just make this little bouncing ball and if people have questions about like why doesn't mine look like this or this went wrong or can you help with this part feel free to ask away okay so at this point because we have a little bit of extra time i'll just like basically do the whole thing again but i'll make it a little bit cooler by adding a forward movement since we have time and while I do this, I just want everybody to work on their own little bouncing ball. And uh, if you need any help with that, just let me know in the chat and I'll assist you as much as you need. Okay, so to go over it again, our down pose, we set it. I set the location keyframe. We can go like, I don't know, about here. And we go up in the air. I location keyframe go down set a new location keyframe this is basically our spacing it's a bit fast so we move stuff around until we feel like the timing is right move it a little bit more as I am feeling right now from experience I just feel like the timing is a little bit off back okay that feels like it's time to walk correctly we want a little bit remember we want a little bit of um, anticipation no I said more hearts thank you a little bit of anticipation so we can move everything forward like a couple of frames and then right here we want it to stay on the ground so we can see why is it that it's actually moving down well it's all to do with the um, in-betweens and to fix in-betweens and things like that we got to use our good old friend the graph editor now this is a little complex for this first part I'll go more, more over this in session 2 of the bouncing balls but right here we can basically see that it's in betweening but it's doing it totally wrong so we can click this handle click V put it to vector and that basically means we can adjust it um, separately same here V vector so we can flatten it out basically it stays on the ground here which is what we want and now we have this classic problem like we had before the spacing the in-betweening is completely wrong so we V vector V vector and then we can make that uh, graph look more like what it is that we expect so I'll go over this stuff a little bit fast now but you can kind of see um, the speed at which you can sort of get these things done right and I just want you all to work on the first jump this is kind of like a little bit extra okay great so we play it here and then we wanted to we want some anticipation so we squash it in the first part I set the location then we release all that energy by stretching it out we want it at the top we want it to be flat because it's going very slow so it doesn't have all that energy and then as it's hitting the ground it has the most energy on the down um, on the way down like the most energy it has is just as it hits the ground because obviously acceleration with gravity as you go towards the ground you just accelerate more and more and more hits the ground and it just squashes out boom and then in the end it goes up again I set the location keyframe and then we add a little bit of okay right and then we add a little bit of follow-through and give it a little bit of life a little bit of balance a little spice okay and we can exaggerate a bit more why not it's kind of fun let's tug the legs too because I like doing that Set I set the location keyframe out here. You can set it to zero. Oops. Okay, now we have a, this line basically just means that it's, it hasn't changed uh, in, in that time, basically, which is fine. That's what we want. Tuck the legs. 
Okay, got to slow down a little bit. So now we basically have two of the same jumps, right? More or less. We can kind of make it hold a little bit in the air longer. I think that'd be nice. Make these two sides look the same because I saw that we changed that a little bit. Okay. And now what we can do is we can unlock our X location. Ooh. Exciting stuff. And now we can basically just make it jump sideways. So we want it at the end as it hits the ground. Let's say we make it jump. Um, so G and then X to move it on the X axis. We want it to be over here. I set the location. And now it's gonna look very strange. Because if we look in our graph editor, like all the stuff in between, we unhide the X axis, we can see we want it to start moving at this point, but our X is not moving at all because we have a keyframe right here that's kind of blocking it. So we can delete that. That's a keyframe that we set before. Just selecting it and clicking delete. And now it's moving from the beginning until the end. But it's interpolating wrong. So we can click V vector. And now it's like a linear movement because we don't want the ball to be like affected by anything like wind or something. We just want to keep moving straight while it's in the air. Right, great. And now we go here. We can also think about the arcs of animation too. This is another principle. So, oh, oops, Get the minus one. As it's moving up, it kind of looks like it's jumping straight up, but then it's moving in that way, which is kind of weird. So for the anticipation, we can actually already start angling it in the direction that we want the ball to jump. So we can unlock here on the X, set the eye, set the location, boom. And then we actually jump already in the direction that we want it to move. Control Z to undo. And then here we want it to move towards like basically like a spring that's that's in the air it moves and then the back part sort of follows that arc there we go now we made a sideways movement Then we can also record this and like if we wanted to but all i want for people is sort of to get to this stage that would be more than enough that'd be fantastic actually and then from there this is session one of two sessions so there'll be a session two in two days um and then i'll go over the more complicated not complicated but like <clears throat> I'll try to give you all a bit more control of the animation, how you make it feel a specific way, as like what it is that you want it to feel like. So next time we'll do three different balls that all feel very different. Right now we basically just made like a generic bouncing ball, which is good enough for what we wanted out of today. And I hope people sort of learned something from today. I'll probably spend like um, a couple more minutes in case there's any questions. If you have some kind of artwork you would like me to review, like honestly, I spend, I live in these other tabs up here, like modeling or sculpting and stuff like that. So if you have some renders or models that you would like feedback on, I would recommend joining the KDET Discord. Let me see if I can find the link for y'all. The KDET Discord is great. I mean, finding community, is super important when you're doing 3d i find like having that community of people there to sort of look at your stuff is just really helpful when you're trying to evolve as a person and as a, like a, as a 3d artist it should actually also be in the description like the uh, discord link for kata is in the description so i'd recommend joining that and then uh, you can post in the channels when you want people to look at your stuff. I definitely recommend that.
What's going on? Yeah, there's cool stuff already. So this is basically our Discord, the community that we have here at Kena. Super Wait, nice. Everybody is very nice an about stuff. And you can get the um, feedback and like recommendation and stuff. Wait, um, what's going on all for free. So I would definitely take advantage of that if I were you. Yeah, there's a bunch of cool stuff. Wait, like what's animation. going on here? There's an What's going on so here? Everybody's there's just learning together. Hotel and you're not running to fix it. Wait. Right, so if there is no questions, um, I will head out and I hope y'all learned at least a couple things. If there's anything I would like y'all to take away from the stream is just the basic use of like the 12 principles of animation. Um, at least the ones that we use today. Like if you start to understand those, you can really do whatever it is that you want with animation. It doesn't have to be a bouncing ball, it can really be anything. Those principles apply to any and all animation, more or less stylized or realistic. So, yeah, I'll head out, everybody. Um, oh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening or morning or whatever night, wherever you're in at in the world. Uh, and I hope you join me again in two days for the next session. So, goodbye.